football in England, football in Germany, football in Spain, football in Portugal, and football in Denmark, for goodness sake. So why on earth do some people call it soccer? I'm new to so much of this, I just find it so exciting. What if we told you that the word soccer is as old as football? Welcome to Football 101, a crash course in football trivia for beginners and cool stories for seasoned fans. Let's kick off today's lesson, but before we do, let's agree on the name of the game, shall we? Soccer or football? Now, if it looks like a dog, walks like a dog, and barks like a dog, then it's a dog. So if you play it using your feet, and you play it using a ball, but unfortunately, that's not how it works. Football has been around for a long time. It's possible to retrace its origins back to the 3rd century BCE in China, but the closest thing to what we have today originated in the UK. In October 1863, 11 London-based football clubs and school representatives wanted to set up the rules of the game, and their combined effort gave birth to the Football Association. Around the same time, another game that was played with a ball was equally popular in England, rugby football, which derived its name from the school where it was first played. Back then, it was common practice in England, and especially amongst Oxford students, to add ER to the end of words and monikers to make slang versions of them. So that's how association football first became asos and then soccer. Rugby was called rugger for the very same reason. The game quickly caught fire and spread everywhere. But Rugger had beaten it to places like the United States, Canada, and New Zealand, where the name football was associated with rugby or games similar to it. So they said, heck, we already have football. Let's call that other one soccer. And now you know. I don't think I could have dreamed that up. That was yeah. super remarkable. I don't Yes, it's the team that just won the biggest club competition in the world for the 14th time. Why is this club from Madrid called Real? Well, there's a simple explanation for it. The word Real means royal in Spanish, and it signifies a benediction received from Spanish royalty. But did you know that Real Madrid was not even the first team that received it? Sociedad de Futbol was the first club to receive the royal treatment. And it was all thanks to the then King Alfonso the 13th, who had his summer capital in San Sebastian. The very city where Sociedad de Futbol was founded. Guess it helps having friends in high places. Club Español de Madrid only became Real Madrid 10 years later. There's even a simple way to identify clubs that receive royal patronage. It's the crown on the logo. A bit on the nose, but hey, royalty wants to be a bit out there and grandiose, doesn't it? Before moving on, just a heads up if you ever came across a certain team, Real Salt Lake. No, Salt Lake isn't the name of a thermal bath just outside Murcia. It's actually the capital city of Utah, and while Utah has a lot of mining and agriculture, it does not currently have a king. But the people who founded the city's wink wink soccer team wanted to honor Real Madrid and added a touch of nobility to their name. And now you know. We're coming to the end of our class here, but before the bell rings, let's look at a rather peculiar case. Why does Alan St. Maximin, Newcastle's fleet-footed phenom, wear bandages over his headband? Maximin is a fashion icon on and off the pitch, and his inspiration, especially while playing, comes from King Tutankhamun. Okay, not literally, but St. Maximin almost mummifies himself before stepping out onto the pitch. Ankles, knees, wrists, arms, head. Legend has it that Newcastle United convinced the Frenchman during transfer talks thanks to an added option of a private kit man in his contract. Now, jokes aside, we've seen many players use bandages for different reasons, and it almost always follows a similar pattern. A player gets injured, starts using a bandage, things go well wearing it, and they keep it through superstition. Ask Luis Suarez and Karim Benzema if you want this confirmed. But St. Maximin's case is different. It's just a fashion choice. A choice which led to problems with the authorities. 
St. Maximin was charged with two breaches of the FA's kit and advertising regulations because he was wearing his signature Gucci headband with the brand's logo pretty much visible every time he was on camera. Since that day, St. Maximin covers his headband with, guess what? More bandages! At this rate, he'll be truly mummified before his contract runs out. And with that final body preservation joke, we're wrapping up. Ah, oh, come on. That's it for the very first episode of Football 101. Did you learn something new? Do you have any other interesting stories you want us to tell? Be sure to let us know. Thanks for watching, and see you next class.